Welcome to this video where I show a little bit about power generation in ResSim. You can see here that I have a very simple model. I have a single reservoir on the main stem of a river, and then I have a tributary that comes into this main stem. So if we go take a look at the reservoir, we'll first look at the physical properties. You can see I have a controlled outlet on this reservoir. It has a capacity of 1,250 cubic feet per second. I also have a power plant and I put in all the parameters of the power plant. It has a max capacity of 500 cubic feet per second which uh, does not vary with elevation. I have a capacity of uh, 2 megawatts. I have an efficiency of 80% and um, I don't have any station use. Station use is just water that would be sent through the power plant, but it's not actually uh, used for generating power. And in this case, I left the hydraulic losses as zero. So I tried to keep this very simple so that you'd be able to um, more easily interpret the results. Whenever you have a power plant, you need to have a tailwater specified because part of the power equation that ResSim uses has head differential. So again, I just tried to keep it simple. So we have a constant elevation of 25 feet for the tailwater. And now I wanted to go in and look at the operations. So I have operations set called power ops, and I actually just have one rule. Um, I have this hydropower rule that's in the conservation zone. By the way, I just use the standard zones, flood control, conservation, and inactive. So I have my hydropower rule, and again, it's just a rule that is applied specifically to the power plant. The first thing I do is define my power pool. So it says the zone at the top of the power pool is the conservation. So it uses the top of conservation as the top of the power pool. And then it'll use the top of inactive as the bottom of the power pool. You can see here that I'm, I have a very simple relationship. And basically, if I'm in the bottom half of this power pool, I'm going to have a plant factor of 50%. If I'm in the top half of the power pool, so I have 50 to 100%, then I'll have a 100% plant factor. Um, so again, it's probably not realistic, but it actually helps to interpret the results when you're learning about the power in, um, in ResSim. Uh, to demonstrate this, I use a power generation pattern. So this is how you specify when you want the power plant to be utilized in ResSim. And you can see that I have a 1 for all 24 hours of the day. Um, I don't change it um, throughout the week. So I just say all week, just use um, 1. So use the full power plant capacity throughout the entire day. I wanted to show you the alternative. So in this alternative power ops, um, let's see, we're using a one hour time step. I did get a question about the time step. And by the way, you, you, you can just hit the down arrow and you can go anywhere from five minutes all the way to one day in your time step. But for this one, we're gonna use one hour. I specify my operation set as power ops. Um, obviously, I put in my look back data. And one of the things for this particular example is that I did start in the conservation pool. So I use a look back elevation of 55. I think it was 75 for the top of conservation. Um, so you can see that we're definitely in the conservation pool. Um, and then, of course, I specify my time series for both this point, um, the upstream end of the main stem and also the upstream end of the tributary. So I'll close this. I already have this saved, so I'm just going to say no in this case. And I'm going to go to my simulation module. And I'm going to make the simulation power ops active. And I'm going to turn off um, that. We'll look at power ops 2 to show a different element of power generation. So I've already uh, simulated this, but obviously, you know, when you want to simulate something, just hit compute. And we can go take a look at the plot. Okay. 
So one of the things that I'm noticing, this is the elevation. You can see that the top of conservation was 75 feet. And I started down at 55 and we have a rising pool elevation. So one thing I notice is that this is my inflow. So I have a constant inflow of 1000 CFS that's coming into my reservoir. And the one thing that I notice is that I actually have a release that is dropping. And so what I'm assuming is happening and we can go look at the power plot to, to make sure, but it's probably good to try to get some idea of what's actually happening with the model. Um, what I'm assuming is that I'm able to meet the one megawatt. Remember I had a two megawatt power plant, but I only was using 50% of it when I'm in the bottom half of the, of the conservation pool or the power pool. So I, um, I'm most likely meeting that one megawatt and because I have a rising pool elevation um, and remember I had a constant tailwater so I have a rising pool elevation which is giving me a greater head differential it means that it's requiring less flow to meet that one megawatt and then what I suspect is that when I get to this point and I'll zoom in here so we can actually see this date a little bit better Okay, so at some time early on the 12th, what I'm assuming is happening here is that I'm moving into the top half of the power pool and I want to get to uh, two megawatts at that point because I want to use the full power plant capacity. And so that's why it looks like that the maximum flow, which was 500 CFS at this power plant, is now being used. Okay, so let's go and look at the plot power to see if those assumptions are correct. So here you can see that I have um, my power flow and you can see that I'm getting, um, uh, so I start up here which is close to 500, close to the max, but then the flow through the power plant continues to drop and you can see here, the by the way, the green line is the actual power that's being produced and you can see that I am able to produce my one megawatt that I was wanting but then I get to the point where I'm in the top half of the power pool right here on this is the 11th oh, I'm sorry the 12th of January very early on the 12th of January and I get to the point where I want to generate two megawatts and you can see it in this upper chart so this dashed red line is telling me how much is the required power and you can see down here it's the power required um, so I wanted two megawatts but the blue line is giving me the capacity that it's able to generate and with a rising pool elevation that capacity continues to go up however even when I max out the flow through the power plant I'm not able to get to that two megawatts and so that that's what we're seeing in in this simulation now you can also see that the uh, the flow through the um, or the total flow goes from 500 which was going through the power plant all the way up to a thousand once I get to and it's not shown here but that was when I got to the top of the conservation pool because Resim wants to hold on to the top of conservation pool so it's still putting 500 through the power plant, but now it's also putting 500 through that controlled outlet in order to hold the top of conservation. So that, that's an interpretation of those results. So now I also wanted to show you a different simulation that I had developed, and this is called Power Ops 2. And we're going to set this as active, okay, and we can compute it. And what I want to do is show the reservoir properties. And again, it looks very similar to the last one. The only difference is that I actually have, well, there's two differences. And one is that I have a plant factor of 100% for all elevations or all percent full in the power pool. But then I have this power generation pattern. And you can see that what I'm asking for is I have a, uh, well, I have zeros to start. But then early in the morning, I say I want half of the power plant capacity generated. Then in the middle of the day, I want the full power plant capacity generated. 
And then in the evening, I want two hours of half of the power plant capacity generated. And in between all those times, I just said zeros, meaning I don't want any uh, power at all. So let's go take a look at what those results look like. So the first thing we're going to do is plot it. And you can see that our pool looks very similar, right? It continues to rise because we have a thousand CFS that's coming in. And even though we're generating power, we're not using the, the whole thousand CFS to do that. And part of the reason is because we don't have the capacity to pass a thousand CFS to our power plant. But one thing that you should notice is that on these, um, you, you have these clusters for each day. And these clusters are showing uh, these three uh, spikes of power generation. And the one thing to notice is that for the smaller spikes, right, the ones on the ends, not, not the one in the middle, but these smaller um, spikes in each one of the clusters of three, that it appears that it's meeting the amount that we want generated because we can see that the amount of flow that is uh, going through the power plant or the total amount of flow that's being released continues to drop. And that's what we would expect as we get a rising pool elevation that we would need less flow in order to meet our power generation requirement. So that tells me that it probably is meeting that requirement, but the fact that when we want the full power plant capacity, that that is just uh, basically maxed out at 500 CFS, no matter what elevation we in, that tells me that we're probably not meeting that requirement. So we can go look at plotting the power for this. And this is kind of a busy graph, but it's very similar to what we saw before. And here you can see this is the flow from the power plant. That's the red line. So we see that um, the amount of flow that's required um, when, we, when we're trying to do the larger spike in the, the three spike cluster for each day, that it's maxed out at 500. But for the smaller one, that it continues to vary and it continues to go down as the pool elevation increased. So if we look at the power that's generated up here, you can see that we are getting one megawatt of power at the smaller spikes. So that means that we actually are meeting the one megawatt. So we wanted half the power plant capacity that we're actually meeting that. But we're not able to meet the full power plant capacity of two megawatts. So here you can see that the blue line, remember, gives you the, the capacity of the power plant, whereas the red line, the red dash line, will tell you what was desired or maybe it was the, the required power generation. But you can see that you can't meet what is desired or what is required because you just don't have the head differential um, or the flow or a combination of those two to get all the way up to two megawatts. But you can see that ResSim is trying to meet the two megawatts. So it's trying to get as close as possible. So it will send out as much flow as it possibly can. So it'll max out the flow to get you as close as possible to the two megawatts. You know, so it is maxing, um, it is generating as much as it possibly can. And then here you can see that, and again, this is what we expect, that the total flow then goes from the 500 all the way up to 1,000. So here you can see that you um, once you reach top of conservation, and top of conservation isn't shown on this chart, but once you reach top of conservation, it will just max out the power plant and then send 500 from the controlled outlet to give you a total outflow of 1,000 just to hold that top of conservation because rest him isn't limited by any other rules, so it'll just hold that top of conservation. So hopefully this helped you to understand a little bit more about ResSim and, and um, maybe a little bit more about how ResSim handles power generation in particular. Um, for the next video, I am looking to try to develop a, a pump back facility and show how, well, show at least one example of how that would work. Um, hopefully I'll be able to get that done soon. Um, so if you um, like this video and want to be aware of when that one comes out, then feel free to subscribe to the channel. And, and I hope that this video helped you, and thanks for watching.